Hi, I'm Patrick Palm, CEO and founder of Favro, and this is the Learn From Leaders podcast. The background to these interviews is that Favro clients are some of the most innovative and agile businesses out there. And it's used for collaborative planning by marketing teams, by product teams, HR, management teams. And what this means is that we get to know some truly inspiring people. So what we do in this podcast is that I invite them here for a conversation about something where they are true leaders. So we can all learn from it. Let's go. All right. And we are live with Ryan Snyder at Congregate, um, Director of Production. That's your title, right? That is my title. That is correct. I, uh, I head up the production and the QA teams at Congregate right now. So yeah, but I started over the summer uh, last June and it's been awesome. Yeah, I mean that's that's not a very long time ago, but I guess time flies, and and there's been quite eventful times, you know, with COVID and and a lot of other things going on in the world. So, oh my gosh, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I think every uh, it's like what is time anyway these days? So every every month, it's like <laughs> I've only it's only been a month. It's only you know, so yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah, and and I'm super I'm super happy to have you, uh, you know, on 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 this podcast because we we met in. Um, in San Francisco for uh, for GDC, it was super cool to to meet some people uh, live again, and um, you know I'm obviously um, super interested in anything uh, around organization and and of companies and and you know and, and production. And it was a very interesting conversation we had around um, really you know producers and you know, production. Um, obviously, you know, the, the, the title producer can mean a little bit different things at different studios and different publishers, <clears throat> but, you know, generally speaking, um, if we're going to be, you know, I mean, generally, you know, it, it, it is connect, connected to, to production and right. you introdu- introduced a very interesting, so normally when I get, in, get into conversation around producers, it's really, um, okay. So what does the title mean at, you know? you know, very uh, this studio or that studio. But you introduced mm-hmm. a very interesting um, topic to this, which is also that, well, you know, producers are, are very different, um, you know, you know, background, um, you know, what makes some very successful versus, you know, some, you know, might be more struggling. And I, and I thought that was very interesting. And I think that is a, is a fantastic topic, you know, for, for today. But, you know, before we jump into that for, for um, you know, the people that don't know you, um, you know, maybe you can just share, you know, you know, briefly, like your, your story that led up to this job that, you know, you started, um, you know, last summer, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so I graduated college with uh, a bachelor's in audio engineering. So um, I got out of college and I was doing a little freelance for ESPN on the X Games. I moved to Cleveland. I was working at a recording studio. I was working with all sorts of different bands um, and I was starting to build a production studio with uh you know, the, the guy I went to work with there. And I had like a total panic moment where I was like, this is not the right place. This is not the right path. Like I got to get out of here, move back to Chicago. Um, and I was like, well, how do I combine like what I've been doing in audio engineering and some audio production with ESPN and X games? Um, what's out there in, in gaming, like something I loved and did a lot of like PC and some console. Um, and this was, I don't want to date myself, but this is a long time ago. So uh, there's like a five-year gap between like college and when I got my first uh, gig in the industry. So it was through, um, I was working with high voltage software and I, I, you know, I was looking for that fit. Like what would fit what I had, what would kind of take a risk with somebody who didn't have experience? How do I even get in the industry? And I just started hammering them with resumes, um, got an interview. And then I just was consistent, right? It was like, Hey, when we get a green light, we'll hire you. Right. So that took a while as well. And so eventually I landed the job there. And um, the first day on the job, uh, my boss looked at me. Uh, he was the producer on the title. Uh, he looked at me and said, I have no idea what to do with you. So you're just going to have to figure it out. And I was like, okay, I'll figure it out. And I just opened up Excel and I sat down at my desk and I just said, like, just started introducing myself to people and just started talking about you know, problems they were having and, and just trying to wade uh, through all those unknowns. And so that it, it was funny, like that was a very striking moment, uh, it, you know, that I've never forgotten through my entire career and believe it or not, that happened another time, but like 
you know, when you have those kind of moments, you, you take that with you from job to job and roll to roll. Um, you know, I've never been anything but a producer, you know, going from like a contract AP all the way to where I am now. But like, you know, I started to build kind of how I look at production now from that moment then of like, well, that's, that's not a position I want to put somebody else in, right? That's not an experience I want somebody else to have. So how do I look at different producers and different people and their skill sets and, and help them succeed in the ways that they're good at and grow in the ways that they're not potentially. So um, I've had a bit of a journeyman's career I've uh, or journey person's career. I've been, you know, I've worked for uh, Disney Interactive, a wide load. I was the uh, studio head or production director for Foster Games for a while. And so um, I worked at Midway for um, a while too. So, uh, and then I was at Iron Galaxy before coming to Congregate um, Film is in a similar role. So in each of those places, you know, my, like how I worked with producers and what I knew producers could or couldn't do kind of grew as I had, you know, small, small teams or different kind of challenges or had to take on a lot with a little um, to kind of where I am now. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a, a crazy wild ride, but it's been super fun. Well, that's some, some, uh, you know, cool places you've been, you've been at before and Going then into the topic, you know, that, you know, producers aren't, you know, cut from the same cloth. Um, I mean, instead of me, you know, kind of leading in and 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 step by step asking, you know, questions on that, because I, I know you have you have a take on it. And, you know, last time we spoke about that, you know, my reaction was that I, I want to hear the deeper version of this. You know? <laughs> um, so so why don't you actually do that? I mean, I. I you know the if if you know this 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 whole topic of that producers aren't you know cut from the same cloth. I mean, um, you know, don't. Um, uh, I mean, you know, the floor is yours. I will I will definitely ask follow up questions, oh, but sure. I but I I kind of want to get your your spiel on that uninterrupted also. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and feel free to interrupt because you know uh, that'll be one of my weaknesses. Is <laughs> I'll just go on a tangent, so dive in at any time. But yeah, you know what. A lot of this um, kind of ideas I was saying started to build up from from my early days in game production, um, and then really started to get more seated at my, in my last role, and and I'm continuing to refine it even now. And I think it's a, a learning and iterative process anyway, and that's just you know how it is to be in uh, in life and in, in your career. So hopefully, I'm always learning and always evolving how I view things. But um, you know, I had the the fortune. Uh, it, in my last company, we were very fortunate to be working with such a different range of partners and different types of projects, be them you know, straight technical ports, some amount of technical port with some amount of artistic vision in it, uh, full on creative development, um, a range of partners, which were some were like super hands-on and they wanted a lot of details, some that were very hands-off and just had a lot of trust and, and you know, liked a little bit more of like the soft skills and, and communication. Um, and in that too, you had various phases of games. You'd have games in pre-pro, you'd have games that were hot in the middle of development. You had games that were already done and were now being uh, launched on a different platform. You had games that are about to close out. So you had a different range of kind of needs for each project, but then a different range of people that could potentially fit those needs. And so, you know, it was one thing to start thinking about what are the kind of like career of career objectives kind of skill sets somebody would have as a producer, right? You know, leadership skills, hard skills, soft skills, you know, um, be they communication or how they manage people or, or that production vision, which is like, you know, my hand wavy abstract version of like a creative director as a creative vision. I think a, a very um, strong producers have that same kind of production vision just on the schedule and risk side. And so, you know, we started looking at projects with a little bit more of those lens of like, what are those kind of specialties and who do, you know, who do we have at the company within the production team that could fill those specialties? But then also, what are the parts that each individual is wants to grow in, right? We would have, uh, you know, worked with producers who are like, I've never worked with a complex partner before. I've never worked with somebody who... Um, you know, had a lot of requirements or need a lot of information, or we had to navigate a, you know, uh, a particular like spicy set of milestone expectations or, or even like contract negotiations. And so 
uh, you know, I was afforded that, like that ability to be able to say, Hey, this project's coming up. This has that need. This is something that you've been really interested in developing. You're strong in these areas. And this is an area you want to grow in. Like, this is going to be great for your career. Um, you know, and I've had that work really well where, you know, I was able to point, uh, you know, some incredible producers at uh, a project and maybe it wasn't their dream project, right? I'm working on a game or a title that you don't really care about. Um, sorry, that's not the right way to say it, but like that maybe it's not your dream passion project. You care about everything you do. Um, but you're pointed at a specific problem um, that you are now getting to, to, uh, to get that challenge and get those kind of reps and practicing at it. So that was like the first kind of foray into that idea that like you would have that I had producers who were intensely incredible at being like a great, like hype person for the team and a super fantastic kind of like cheerleader, their soft skills were like off the charts, right? They could talk in front of the, the team and talk in front of the company and talk in front of the partner with ease. And they were just always the, the, the person that people wanted to be around. But then when it came to maybe some of the other side, that was where they had room to grow, right? So it was harder for it to, to be very data oriented and sometimes very tactical oriented because you were so soft skills oriented. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of producers who were super data masters, right? They were like fantastic at using the tool, fantastic at setting up processes that would feed into like burn downs and velocity and all the, the kind of nuts and bolts of a project. Um, and those types of producers are fantastic for, um, you know, there are different areas that I could point that type of producer at that would be really helpful, you know? Um, and that's not to say that any one person who's in a, in a niche can't evolve and grow. It was just a matter of recognizing like, Hey, this is an area for you to grow in. This is what you're awesome at. So like, why don't you crush it at like managing art outsourcing where we need some more specific kind of guidelines and measurements of, of success, et cetera. So um, yeah, that's, that's a, a little bit of like where the idea started to come from. And then now it's, you know, I've been trying to think on like, well, what are those, those role types um, and what are those people types? And they kind of fall into, you know, we could make up any, any number of them, but I think of them as like, you've got the coach, the coaches of the, of the production world. And they're like super great at kind of, uh, Hyping, hyping the team up, uh, but giving them really tough love. Uh, maybe sometimes being a little bit too much on the tough love side. Um, you've got like parent mode uh, production people, which is kind of where I, I, I see myself a lot, which is like you're setting expectations and accountability. Um, you're in the tool, but you're not the, the tool wizard. Um, you've got a lot of support and empathy for the team. Um, then you hold them accountable for when they're struggling, but you know you, you kind of manage it as you would like if you, you know, if they were, if, if your team was your children, like how you, how you have to deal with your children. Um, and there's like philosophers or people who have great ideas on what you should, the almost like the educational side of, of game development and, um, and project management or production management, right? They, they, they understand and know and read a lot of like research and read a lot of uh, they're very engaged in the educational community. They have a lot of philosophy on, on what things could happen, but maybe the, some of the struggle is on like actually putting those things into practice and seeing them through or navigating the, the changes that might happen. Um, and then anyway, I talked a little about the hype person and then you've got like the map ma map maker or like kind of like an architect, which is almost like your um, it's almost like a, you know, producer who is, who, loves the almost like the PO hybrid type of role, but they're not a PO because those are often very distinct roles, but they like to wear that kind of product centric hat and they really like to build out the roadmaps and really like to help set the vision for like longer term goals and shorter term goals and really drive the, the you know, the kind of the, the Tetris blocks of where your, you know, product goals should live. Um, and they kind of serve a little bit of a hybrid. Um, and then, you know, there's always like that, um, there's always that need for that biz dev kind of relationship role too, where, you know, sure. As a producer, you might not be doing a ton of biz dev day to day. Um, but you have that special skill where the partner calls and like you, you take their calls at any hour of the day. And like, you, you can kind of like, you can keep the calm or you can 
put on the pressure and you can actually like really hear and and like lock in with what that partner needs and you will start to play that biz dev role where you're like helping them carve the needs for like what your team might need later down the road um and you have just that special skill of working with with people on the other side of the of the, of the coin when you're making a game so uh those are just some of the things <laughs> that are like in my head as i as i had them out to you so i'll pause for a second no, but this is awesome. I mean, you you basically did um, an amazing, you know, GDC speech in in you know just a few minutes. Um, oh, thank you. So, um, I actually, I would love to see you in like written form. You know, actually uh, do those different producer types. Um, I mean, we we should maybe coll- collaborate on an article or something because sure. I, I think that would be cool. But but I have I have a few questions on this. So. So do you do you believe that we are moving towards more specialization when it comes to producers? I mean, one of the one of the things you see quite often is you know technical producer, right. um, and and you know very often when I speak to people at the studio, they're going to be like, okay, it's so hard, it's like crazy hard to find a good technical producer, and you know that's like a big issue, and you know so forth. But I mean, your approach here is is more more nuanced and sophisticated. It's it's more than just breaking that one out is actually a lot of different roles. Do you think that this means that we will see a higher degree of specialization? Um, And a follow-up question to that would be, do you think it's going to be, we're going to call it, let's say, you know, technical producer, uh, let's say, um, if I take one of your, you know, you have the the, the architect and the map maker, so it will be more, let's say, architecture producer, like, you know, uh, Vista producer, uh, or, or maybe we, we, another alternative to that could be that we start seeing that we actually move away from the, the title producer and we're simply going to start calling these different, very, very different things. Sure. But there are these variations. I mean, wh- wh- where do you see this going? That's a, that's a great question. So, you know, it, it would heavily depend on the studio and depend on what their needs are. Obviously, like that's always the, the caveat. Um, but I, I see the specialization and the way I look at it for, for how I try and view like um, recruiting production team members for congregate and how I'm viewing the team is it's almost comes more into like that specialization comes really into hiring. Um, And that's where you're, you are thinking and looking at those same type of skill sets and understanding the types of products that you're making and the types of challenges that you have in making those projects. And then counterbalancing that with the types of, roles that you would like to hire for to help with those needs and fill those gaps. But then also there's the other, you know, there's the other, a larger piece, which is like, what is the kind of culture and the kind of team that you want to build? Because, you know, if you end up building a, a team that's all hard, hardcore data, but your the teams that they're, you know, running are very, um, or leading are very, you know, empathetic, empathy based, or they're very, you know, they need a lot more soft skills. You're just going to offset that too much. So, I, I don't know if I, we'll see people getting away from kind of tried and true, you know, AP producers and senior producers, but I've definitely seen a lot of like personal success in considering these types of skill sets and these types of roles and how you're hiring and, and balancing out production teams within. So, you know, I might look at a team and say, all right, I, I do need somebody who's like really, really strong at like leading team meetings and running sprints and running daily stands and running retros and can like really engage the team. I, I don't, I don't right now need them to be like the stakeholder, you know, glue and, and they don't need to be like that super duper, you know, uh, that they don't have to be as strong on that side. So you can kind of fill, fill the, the needs of your production team based on that. And then might, you might need like your lead or executive producer to have a lot more of those skills that can help counterbalance some of that. So I think it comes in a lot for, to me and a lot for how you hire and how you were looking for somebody. So instead of saying like, did you ship a bunch of games? Do you have this amount of years of experience? I'm sure then that you could fit exactly in with what we're doing because you have shipped games and you have experience and therefore fantastic. <laughs> But let's just double down on that a bit because I think I think what you're saying around that this is very much a hiring question, I think that's very true. Mm-hmm. And obviously the market is very hot. So for any person in the in, in in a position of hiring producers, I need to really think about this, right? 
So would you say that it would make, would provide an advantage to go more specific and say, you know, this is really exactly what we're looking for. And are you that person? Uh, or do you think that that might not be the great, great uh, strategy and you, you rather want to, you know, have other values uh, being expressed when you say what you're looking for. And then, you know, once, mm. once the person is recruited, you kind of see where it fits. I mean, which, which approach would you choose and would you recommend? Well, it's, you know, that's a great question. I think it's, you know, there's no uh, magic interview, especially for that I've, I've seen in production, unfortunately, like having uh, worked at a lot of different companies and interviewed a lot. And I'm sometimes a glutton for punishment and I enjoy interviews. <laughs> um, like, there's no range of like pre-interview questions or even interview questions in which you're going to be able to gauge every single uh, thing on a list or the way in which somebody's going to work or how they're going to tackle a really complex situation that you had never thought about before. I mean, that happens all the time. So I try to look at these as, as like a foundation, right? This will fill the need. And then do you have a lot of the, the new, the new also have, um, you know, we have company values and that's part of what we hire against as well. So I look for, you know, um, candidates that have a good fit for those company values. And then also the values that I personally have for, for what I want to see in the production team. So uh, I would say if you go to, you know, go too hard in a specialty um, that could backfire, if you want to have some of that, you know, uh, breadth and what your opportunities are, are going to be, um, at the same time, it does often take, it's, there's a lot of leaps in faith. You know, you hire somebody you think is going to be fantastic in the type of role they hired for, and it doesn't work out. And that's, you know, that's how you learn and you, you've kind of evolved this process. And so, I, I, you know, as that's a, it's an interesting question, but I, I've definitely, I've definitely been able to take a few leaps where I've worked with some amazing producers, work with, um, you know, uh, some as well right now, some awesome producers that didn't have a lot of game experience, but they had other management experience or other software development experience. And by thinking along some of these lines that don't matter what field you're in, you can build some of that, you can build up that, like, what does it mean to ship a game? And, you know, when we talk about X type of KPI or Y type of process, you under, you'll understand that in time but I can't teach you how to be a, you know, a great people manager. Like you, you know, you've learned that through your own development, your own growth. And so um, having a lens on these helps with that, where you can say, all right, I, I can definitely take a leap. I can bring somebody in from an industry that's semi-adjacent, but not directly games. And that's why I don't always like to use like years of game experience as a, as the, you know, as like a core tenant for how I'm going to, uh, interview or look at candidates. So um, I think we got time for one more follow-up question, and I really would want to ask you this. Sure. Because in the beginning, you know, you you, you talked about uh, producers being very hands-on and producers being very hands-off. Okay. Yeah. And I would like to connect that with, um, you know, there's this, um, there's there's some books and there's there's uh, some people. Um, you know, that people pay attention to who are talking about uh, peacetime CEOs versus wartime CEOs. Mm. It's one of those things I hear, you know, hear a lot, you know, you know, being at the, you know, being CEO at, at the, you know, fast growing, you know, tech company. And what I'm thinking is that maybe that is also a bit applicable um, with, with the game development, because it's quite interesting, you know, I, I, I well, my, my hypothesis is that it might be a different kind of person who's the best when things are going well mm -hmm. to really make sure that it's going even more, you know, well. <laughs> and it might, you know, and, and if, you, if you're in trouble, you right. might need this, you know, somewhat different one. And, you know, when you said like hands on, hands off, I was intuitively thinking that, you know, the hands off one would be, you know, the, the, the peacetime producer and right. the hands off. Uh, well, sorry, hands-on one will be, you know, the wartime, you know, producer. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I just formulated this thought when you said it. So, you know, this is not something I've been thinking too much about. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I would love to hear your perspective on that. You know, like, you know, what, what happens when things go to shit? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's where, you know, you, you start to, you know, if I'm looking, 
That's a great question. And so I think about it in terms of the, the, you know, some of those like uh, uh, lanes, you know, you almost go from like needing a, a, a parent mode, you know, kind of producer who is really good at like giving rope and holding people accountable. But, you know, you're kind of blending the lines all the time between not being too hard, but being, you know, being kind, but not, you know, being supportive. I mean, and sometimes you might need, you need that coach mode um, producer. And I've worked with, uh, and I work with um, some of those right now too, where, you know, I, you need that producer who is like, I've seen the, you know, like you said, like I've seen the shit I've shipped, I've shipped X games. I understand what it means to be in that moment and I can help make the decisions that push that through. Um, and yeah, you shift from needing like that type of producer to a different, and I used to almost look at it too. And in, in phases of development, I've, I've, uh, certainly worked with, um, and work with producers who love pre-production, right. They love blue sky iteration. They love, you know, gray box and prototypes. And they love just that, you know, the, the kind of messiness, but the, the super duper fun, but then it gets the production where you're, you're, you're less like talking about that and you're, you know, you're just in execution and then you're getting into ship mode and you need people who are like, no, we're closing this thing out. Like which, which of these bugs are crashing the game? What's a, what's a, what's a, you know, what's an A bug, what's a B bug, let's do this. And you can actually, uh, you can staff your projects accordingly. If you're building, you know, you're building your production team with that mentality, or you have a, enough producers to kind of do that where you've got producers who, you know, I've definitely worked with producers who are like, I don't really love that blue sky phase. I don't, that's not my favorite. My favorite is more of like the, we know this system. We know we have the architect. Let's, let's like, let's lock it in and let's ship this thing. And that's where you almost, to your point, that becomes like that wartime producer where you're like, dates here, like it's coming, you know, it's coming up like bug triage time. And you're, you know, you're like, we're getting in the war room now and you're having those meetings and you're like, all right, today at five, that's what we're doing. And you're like, you're going into full on coach. You're like, that's it. We're not doing that. We're doing this. And you're, you know, that's almost like your end of development where, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're almost turning your hat totally around. And you're like, all right, let's lock it in and let's get this thing done. Um, so yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, that and it's interesting, mix. you know, I, I you have a very strategic way of thinking about this. And as you said, if you if you are able to have enough producers to actually have that perspective, you know, that can be very very powerful. Yeah, I mean, and it, I know that a lot of this is like it kind of plays into my experience and what I've seen, but it's not always possible, right? Like if you have a smaller team or you're building a team, um, you you know, if you've got three producers and five projects, you're not always going to have the luxury of saying like, now we mix and match like this, but you can still consider what they're really good at and what they need to grow in and balance out those skill sets across the different types of projects you have or the different needs and the timing of those projects. And so, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking on and trying to, to help, you know, not just our projects in that way, but also the production team in that way, because everybody, uh, you know, the path isn't always, I go from being a, you know, an intern all the way to being the, the top of the line production. I think there's lots of different ways you can maneuver within that path and have just tremendous success. And sure, it might lead to the same type of title, um, but the type of role that you play within each of those as you go can, can kind of shape shift um, and builds you up in all those different kind of areas. So by the time you get to that point, you've got a lot of those skills and all those, you know, you know, I don't even know what they would call that, <laughs> the top, like the uh, S plus tier of, of uh, you know, production talent. So I, I have a I have a bunch of follow up questions, but but we're up on time. I think we, we're going to need to do like a session, you know, like like part Let's two, this, you know, part two. Um, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. You know, I mean, we haven't even touched upon, you know, like the live aspect of things. Right. You know, when you get into, you know, live ops and how that affects things. But that's that's like a whole that's like a whole new box to open, right? Yeah, let's so, do it. Uh, so let's 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 make that um, a deal for the next one. All right. Uh, super. Thanks for this. You know, this was uh, this was this was truly great. Uh, I really you. hope you you also uh, take this kind of topic, uh, you know, into something for for a GDC or something because I I really like your um, you know your your approach to this topic and I think you have a um, this is something that people would 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 enjoy. 
And for awesome. all of you who listened, um, if you thought this was interesting, you know, please share so more people can um, um, can take part of this conversation. Um, and um, of course, you know, uh, follow what you know, independent on if you're taking part of this on YouTube or on you know Spotify or any of the other channels. You know, again, uh, you know, Ryan, thank you so much. Um, you, I hope to talk I to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. It was, was awesome. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next round or two. And, and you've inspired me to maybe see if I can get this uh, going for a GDC talk or something. That'd be fun. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Awesome. Take care. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I certainly did. If you want to elevate yourself as a modern leader and help your teams become even more successful, then check out Favor Academy at favor.com. They will find podcasts, webinars, articles, all free of charge. Check it out.